All right, so I've inked up this character. I'm leaving out little details that aren't important. I can just barely indicate things like laces or the bottoms of shoes. But the weight is working. Everything's working pretty well. I can turn off my basic shapes and see just how it works as line work. And I can use my eraser tool. Just tweak it a little bit. It doesn't need to be perfect at this stage because now we're going to smooth it out. So let me put some mistakes in it, you know, like little marks that are left over from my sketching. I thought it'd be a good idea to give him more definition in the chest or maybe show his ribs or show muscles or show like a gleam in the in the gloves. Or I got a little distracted by the fabric around his crotch, whatever it is. And I'll show you how that can be worked on in Illustrator as we vectorize it. I can even do some like loose shading that's not really advisable and see what, what can be done about that. All right, so now I'm gonna save my Photoshop file and of course, for yours, this would be done with all the characters, this kind of refined line, whether it's multiple layers or just one. You're going to turn off your basic shape layer. You're going to turn off your, your blank white layer, so it's just a clean outline. And because you drew it digitally, which was the intention, it should be really pretty solidly black. There shouldn't be a whole lot of gray value in there though some things aren't perfect. Like some marks are kind of awkward still, and that's fine. So now I'm going to save that. First, I should save it as my uh, character sheet sketch. This has the basic shapes and the refined line, and I should always put my name in there as a PSD to the desktop. But now I'm also going to save it in this form as a PNG, a transparent single layer image to the desktop. And once I see it on the desktop, I can open that PNG right here with Illustrator to convert it into a vector. And really work on cleaning it up. I love this new uh, opening graphic for Illustrator, but it's misleading because it has a texture fill on it. And well, you can do that in Illustrator, but it's like a special effect treatment in Illustrator. You should still think of Illustrator as cut out pieces of paper. <laughs> Don't start thinking of it like sponge painting. That would be a mistake. But it's a nice illustration. Now the reason we're going to vectorize our outline is because it allows it to work in any resolution. So when I bring it in and I click it, it's not going to show individual vector shapes because this is a raster image, a PNG pixel-based image. If I zoom in on it, I can see those pixels. Even though this is 600 pixels per inch, there are still pixels. And I want to get rid of all that, so it's perfectly clean. So what do I do? Once it's outlined, you'll get, with the little blue select box, you'll get the tracing options up here. And I want to go to Image Trace, go to Black and White Logo as the default settings to start with. And then I want to make sure I open these options here, which are right here. So if this option window isn't showing to you, click here and it will show up. Then I want Advanced Options. And these are where everything is. It's weird that they call them advanced options because this is why you use this tool. The first thing I want you to do, notice how it filled in this space with white. 
that was clear before as a PNG. I want to ignore the white so that it's empty. So again, our vector is just floating black lines so that we can color behind them like a stained glass window. Next, I can zoom in on a problem area. You see all these little marks? Now they're previewing the vector and there's no more resolution. It's just a clean cutout at any resolution. And instead of having to go in and erase all these little stray marks that I don't want, I might be able to affect that in these settings with how many paths I allow. So let's say I allow fewer paths. That will simplify some of these floating islands. It will smooth the lines. And then corners and noise. It will make subtle changes in what it allows and what it doesn't. So now the things that were awkward before, like this little wavy line, let's see if I still have it open in Photoshop. When I brought it in, the things that were slightly awkward, you know how the shapes kind of taper to, to weird ends. Now by using those vector options, I've smoothed those out for the most part. You see, nice curves. There are little marks I still want to get rid of and we'll be able to do that. But once I'm happy with these settings, then I can hit expand, and that will actually change it into vectors. So now I have vector shapes. And having vector shapes means that it's really easy to select and delete. So if I don't want this line at all, or if I want to change it, what do I do? Just a nice review. I'm going to use the small selection tool, select these paths. I can just delete them. And if I'm having trouble selecting them, I can use the lasso tool, the lasso small selection tool to select. And then if I want to change them, I can use my favorite tool, the pencil tool, which they now have under the shaper tool, but it's still under the brush. And then you just hold down command to change to the small select tool, and then you can redraw the shape. So if I want to make this a little bit bigger, it's like magic scissors. And I can double click on the pencil tool and set how smooth I want it to be versus how accurate. And for making refinements in Illustrator, I like it to be super smooth. Because that's that helps it to match this kind of smooth uh, outline I'm going for. If I want to smooth out this line, I can change it on the outside and then I can change it on the inside. Just make it fit a little bit better. If I felt like that was a little too bony, you can just slightly redraw it, and it will smooth it out for me, and then redraw the outside. So remember, each line, because we're doing them as fill paths, this inking, has an inside and an outside edge. So I can thin out the shoulder there if I want to. Really have control. thin out his jawline a bit, just the outline of it. The other tool you might like is just the eraser tool, which just like the pencil, you can double click. You can set the size of it. I'm going to keep it really small, but this tool We'll get rid of the shapes and even cut into the shapes that you're working with and reshape them if that's what you want. I want to round this out a little bit and just trim the corners.
it doesn't leave you with the smoothest results like the pencil tool does. So you can use a combination of them. And then of course there's also underneath the pencil tool the smooth tool. So if you're not really sure how to draw it but you just want to round it out, select the path and use the smooth tool. All right. So now, how do you save your vector outline once you're happy with it? And you can tweak it quite a bit still and play. But I want you to be really pretty confident with your vector outline, that it is what you want it to be before you start coloring. So you save it as an EPS file, which can be opened in Illustrator or in um, Photoshop. And you can also add more. So I can use the pen pencil tool. And I have it on just black on white here with no stroke. If I wanted to add another line, I just want to fully contain it. And then I want to fill it with black. Like so. And then I can reshape it. But I think for my professional practice, it's easier to, um, to make most of your lines as a sketch in Photoshop and then to refine them in Illustrator rather than creating them in Illustrator. But you're going to do what works best for you. Okay, so now that I have that, I think his belly button's a little high too. You can also just move these individual lines around very easily. Belly button is quite high. Okay, so now if I'm happy with that, I say File, Save As, Carl Character Sheet. I'm going to call these refined lines, or you can call them inks if you like. And not as an AI file, but as an EPS file. I don't even need to save it as an AI file because I can open the EPS in Illustrator and it will still have all the features. So you don't need to make it complicated. I didn't create any uh, new layers or groups within Illustrator. I just saved it as an EPS to the desktop. Now I go back to my character sketch. And I take the EPS from the desktop and I drag and drop it in. And it will come in as a new layer that's actually a smart layer. That I want to line up with my original drawing. Doesn't matter if it matches perfectly or not. Hit return. Turn off the back background drawing and you'll see that it's a smart layer which means that I can't accidentally mess it up unless I rasterize it. I don't want to rasterize it because even if I sketch at a really low resolution before I color, I can check the image size, and I know this is fine, this is at 600. But I can up that image size, and the smart outlines will, will um, repopulate at that resolution as clean as possible. So keeping it as a smart layer based on an EPS vector will make it always as clean as possible. Now, I lock that layer on the top, and I start building new layers underneath. And my first would probably be flat color. And with my flat color layer, even though I have my EPS vector outlines locked, I can still use the magic wand to select within them. So I can get, let's see, what's a nice closed shape? Oh, I want contiguous turned on, deselect. So I can get his chest there, and I can choose a skin color. And then I can just use the paint bucket, but it won't let me do it on my line layer because I don't want it to. I locked it. So I, I go to my flat color layer and I drop that color in. And if that looks too dark, I modify it. Let's see. 